Welcome everyone back to The Real News Network. I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore. Joining us once again for his segment on political prisoners facing reality is Jihad Abdul Mumit. Jihad is a former political prisoner himself as, part of, as a result of his work with the Black Panther Party and Black Liberation Army. And he is currently also the national co-coordinator for the National Jericho Movement, whose goal it is to free all political prisoners and grant amnesty to those still so imprisoned. Welcome back to The Real News, Jihad. Welcome. Thank you, brother Jared, and, and greetings of peace to the listening audience. So as we've been wanting to do with you uh, each week, you have an update for us on several political prisoners, including uh, the recent services for Mondo Wilanga. Uh, please tell us what's been going on. Yeah, wonderful service uh, uh, last Saturday uh, for brother M uh, Mondo Wilanga. Um, we had it at the Malcolm X uh, Memorial uh, Center which is the location and place of Malcolm X's birth and where he was raised initially in Omaha. And they have a wonderful, beautiful center there. There are a lot of good speakers there. Uh, the former uh, chairperson, of tech, Dr. Tekla Akbala Johnson, who was on last week. And we, and we had her comment on the death of Mondo. She presented and we had Sister Angela Davis, Professor Davis was there also. And myself and a host of wonderful people presenting the life and times of Mondo. The lesson that we want to draw from that whole experience, of course, is to is the serious initiatives and efforts that must be made to free these freedom fighters from prison. Now, we have a brother that's passed away after doing about 45 years in prison for a case for a crime that he was accused of that he did not commit. And the evidence was so skewed that even a blind person could have seen how contrived that was. But he, nevertheless, he passed away. And I would say it with all due respect, he passed away on our watch. Our comrade passed away on our watch. He, he died in prison after doing over four decades, going on five decades in prison. And so for all of us as active in the community that understand these issues, it, is, it, just, it just begs the question of our responsibility of beating the drum, making known who our freedom fighters were, and, and just doing all we can, even if it's just writing a letter, sending commissary money, writing to the pro board, tuning in, and quite naturally, you can always tune in on the Jericho website, www Jericho Movement, to be in tune. And we won't, cannot forget the remaining Omaha II prisoner, Armando's comrade, Ed Poindexter, who still remains there uh, in, in the Nebraska State Penitentiary during the same amount of time, and he has his own medical issues that he's, that he's confronted with. So as we try not to fall down on our watch uh, mm -hmm. uh, regarding several others who are still living behind those walls, uh, quickly, if you can, update us on some of those uh, folks and where they are and how p people interested can get involved to help them. Yes, really briefly, um, we have several pro hearings coming up um, on the radar. We have, as we've been mentioning consistently, Dr. Matula Shakur, I believe that's coming up real soon in uh, April the 4th is the date that we have. You can check his own website, uh, Matula Shakur's website and the Jericho website for any changes in that. And always letters to the pro board, letters to Matula himself, always needed to show that, that support. Um, we have Jalil Abdul Mutakin that's coming up in a couple of months, June, I believe. You can go to his website, once again, access uh, the Jericho website. Uh, these two freedom fighters. We had Herman and, and, Bell. And by the way, just very quickly, uh, before you get to Herman Bell, I just want to remind people that they can go back and see our previous segments where we have focused on the case of, of Dr. Matulu Shakur and Jaleel Montaquin. Mm -hmm. And even as I understand you're about to say something about Herman Bell, him, him as well. Uh, but please continue. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, Herman Bell, our brother Herman Bell, also in the New York State uh, system with uh, Jalil, he was denied pro, I understand. So once again, on our watch, and it's not our fault. It's just the means that we have to just do that much more to ensure that we've done all we can, you know, for the liberation of those that fought for our freedoms and our defense and our protection against police brutality, help feed and clothe and shelter our brothers and sisters, our grandmothers and our grandfathers in the community uh, when they were home on the street. So he was denied parole. So the continue, the struggle continues with him. Uh, we have a, a brother who has not been mentioned on this program of date, Romaine Chip Fitzgerald, who's a, uh, a member of the Black Panther Party in Southern California, serving two life sentences. He's on the radar now. He has uh, two life sentences for allegedly uh, the, the, the deaths of two police officers. And we, we, he's been in, he might be one of our longer 
political prisoners now pushing up to 50 years of incarceration. I know we have Rochelle Mugi, who's well over 50 years. If you can imagine the amount of time when we talk about 50 years of incarceration, just go into your bathroom and stay there that long. It's just, it's just a ridiculous amount of time. It's a serious human rights violation, particularly when we know that uh, these individuals are responding to the racism and violence in our community. Many of their cases are contrived and set up by the counterintelligence uh, program of the FBI. And even for those that have may have been uh, truly implicit in their own cases, that they know they stood up for our freedoms and, our, and protecting us against police violence, the same violence that we see exacted upon our young sisters and brothers today in the streets of America. You know, you, you've mentioned Angela Davis's name as being part of the, the Mondo Ilanga uh, service, uh, but having now just mentioned Rochelle McGee, it's important, I think, to remind folks that uh, as famous as Angela Davis is, uh, uh, McGee was at least temporarily her co-defendant uh, mm -hmm. and is still not free. Uh, so, so uh, you know, as people focus on uh, Black Lives Matter and the trials uh, going on around the country related to their activism, uh, the potential creation of a new generation of political prisoners, and as people mm -hmm. are, are often attuned to the, the, the uh, notoriety of a person like Angela Davis, I think, it, it, as you have been doing here, it's important to remi remind folks that uh, underneath that, that popularity are still folks locked up uh, who struggled with her and struggled with them in that, in that generation. Um, anyway, but Jah Jihad, I just wanted to give you one uh, final moment here to, to, to wrap up uh, any final thoughts here or comments for this, this edition uh, before we uh, move on. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Brother Jared. Just once again to encourage our uh, listening audience that this is an ink pen not being sarcastic, but we have to put our, 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 our writing into effect. That's one of the strongest things that we have, the ink of a scholar. Writing a letter is very powerful to a pro commission, to the, to, to the uh, freedom fighter himself, to the defense committee, picking up the phone, calling. We did have one release, uh, Brother Muhammad Kopti, who was released uh, from, North, from North Carolina, this brother was almost 90 years old. In fact, he wasn't 90 years old. He did 40 years in prison. He was released, but once again, justice delayed is justice denied. So we're glad that he is home with us now. He's a name that we may not be familiar with, but once again, you can access the Jericho website to get the history of him. So people do trickle out after doing what, you know, three fourths of their life in prison and at the age of almost 100 years old. We really have to be on our, our, our case with this sisters and brothers, and I encourage you to do so. And anything that you do to your own capacity and resources, we so much sincerely appreciate what you do. Jihad abdul Mumit, thank you again for joining us here at the Real News Network for Facing Reality, uh, again, a segment on, on focusing on political prisoners. Thank you, Brother Jerry. All power to the people. And thank you all for joining us wherever you are in the world. Again, I'm Jared Ball. For all involved here in Baltimore saying, as Fred Hampton used to say, to you we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody, and we'll catch you in the whirlwind.